Problem set 3.4, problem number 13, the question about a spelunker who is being lifted upward and out of a sinkhole by means of a motor-driven cable. This lift is performed in three stages, each of which covers 10 meters. First, they are accelerated from rest to 5 meters per second. Then, they are lifted at a constant speed of 5 meters per second. And finally, it is decelerated to zero speed. And we want to know how much work is done on the 80 kilogram spelunker by the force lifting him during each stage. Now, here's something which arguably could have been described in more depth had we actually had the time to do so. But the big uh, idea here is when we're considering work is that work is done by each individual force. We've got a spelunker who is being lifted by a tension force and being pulled downward by their own weight. The tension force does some work and the weight does some work. We could find the work done by the tension if we knew the tension by solving for uh, tension times their displacement uh, cos theta. Again, the dot product. But in this case, it's relatively easy because the tension is upward and the displacement is upward. So theta in this case is zero degrees. So cosine of theta is one. So uh, when it comes to the work done by gravity, that would be the force due to gravity, that would be mg, times the change in height, since they're moving upward, times the cosine of theta again. But in this case, since the displacement is upward, but the force due to gravity is downward, theta in this case is 180. So the cosine of 180 would be negative 1 times all of this. So uh, the work done by the tension is positive. It's trying to add energy to the object. And the work done by gravity is negative because it's essentially, literally, working against the tension. As the thing moves up, gravity is trying to take energy away from it. Imagine if there was no gravity at all. If you applied an upward force to this thing, it would accelerate. It would gain a ton of speed if there was no downward force holding it back. And so the idea that um, there's, by the time it reaches, or by the time it moves upward somewhat, uh, it's going to have less kinetic energy than it would have if gravity was absent. And when we take these two into account, if we add them together, the grand total of the work done, the work done by the tension and the work done by gravity, those combined are what we refer to as the net work, which then would tell us how much the kinetic energy has changed. So that is to say that the net work is equal to the work done by each individual force. If there are three forces, each of them can do some amount of work. And if you add them all up, you get the net work. And if you then set that net work equal to the change in kinetic energy, then you could learn something about how much it has changed its speed. Well, in this case, we're sort of doing the reverse of that. We already know how, something about how much it has changed its speed. This time, we want to break that down to discover something about the forces or the work done by each individual force. Now, that's the big concept governing this whole problem. But there's more than one way to go about solving what you need to. Uh, the first version is to actually determine what is the tension. We could use forces and Newton's laws to actually find the tension. If we want to know the work done by tension, well, let's find the actual tension. Let's find out what the tension is, multiply that by the displacement, and well, there you go. 
that's going to be the work done by the tension. Uh, to do that, we would need to know something about the distance it's traveled and, uh, well, to find the tension, actually, we need to consider the forces on it. We've got the tension upward and we've got mg downward. And if we create a Newton's second law statement, we've got tension minus mg equals ma in order to solve for tension. Well, I guess we're going to need to solve for the acceleration. Well, we've got an initial and final velocity. It starts from rest, starts with velocity of zero. It accelerates for 10 meters. And we know a final velocity is five meters per second. So uh, if we rearrange this, we can solve for the acceleration. And we find that the acceleration is 1.25 meters per second. Okay, now we've got an acceleration. Check. And we know what mg is, we know what the mass is. We can rearrange and find that the tension is 900 newtons. And then we can solve for the work done by the tension. 900 times 10, 9,000 joules. And repeat that exact same sequence for stage 2 and stage 3. Solve for tension, multiply displaced by displacement, there's your work done. In stage 3, again, uh, well, some deceleration occurs, but uh, we would need to solve for acceleration, use that acceleration to solve for tension, and once we know the tension, we could plug that in and multiply by the displacement. And finally, solve for the amount of work done. That's one broad stroke strategy. Find the exact amount of tension, multiply it by the exact amount of displacement, and there is the work done by that tension force. But there's a whole other way that this could be accomplished, and that is, as we said before, find the net work done and set that equal to the change in kinetic energy. Well, as we said before, the net work done would be the work done by the tension and the work done by gravity, and those combined would give us the change in kinetic energy. So let's break it down from this perspective. The work done by tension is, in fact, what we're looking for. So let's just leave that as work done by tension. We don't even need to find the force if we can find everything else. So let's find everything else. The work done by gravity. Well, uh, the work done by gravity is going to be mg times the change in height times the cosine of theta, as we I think we looked at that just a couple of minutes ago. Um, a diagram wouldn't hurt. Uh, we got mg downward, and this object is moving upward. And so the work done by an individual force is that force times the displacement times cosine of the uh, angle between them. So we're going to have the force is mg. The displacement is how far up it goes, change in height. And theta in this case, because mg is down and d is up, theta is 180 degrees. So cosine of 180 is going to be mg delta h times negative 1. So the work done by gravity is uh, negative m, g, delta h, whatever those things happen to be. So we've got the work done by tension uh, minus mg delta h equals uh, the change in kinetic energy, which would be uh, kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy original. So that would be 1 half mv final squared minus one-half V original squared. Well, this spelunker was accelerated from rest, so the original kinetic energy would be zero. So 
we've got the work done by the tension is going to be, uh, oh, let's, let's plug in some numbers, minus mg. So that's 80 kilograms times g, which is 10, times the change in height, which is 10, equals the change in kinetic energy, which is going to be 1 half times 80 times 5 squared. Half of 80 is 40. 40 times 5 squared, 40 times 25, 4 times 25 is 100, 10 times that is 1,000. So we've got the work done by tension minus 8,000 equals 1,000. Come on. So if we add the 8,000 to both sides, we find out that the work done by tension is 9,000 joules. And much in the same way, we would repeat that sequence. For the middle sequence, the work, the net work done is still the change in kinetic energy, but in this case, He's lifted at a constant speed. So the change in kinetic energy here is zero. He's neither gaining nor losing any kinetic energy. So the work done by the tension plus the work done by gravity are going to add up to zero. Sure, they're being raised up, and they are adding some gravitational potential energy. But because gravity is working against them, that is going to be taking away any possible kinetic energy. And so that's why this net work is the change in kinetic energy only. It says when you take all of the works done together, what you're really going to know is how much did the change in kinetic energy, how much did the object change its kinetic energy? Well, the work done by tension plus no, this part's the same. I'll draw it in uh, yellow. This part right there, that's exact repeat. The work done by gravity is going to be the force of gravity, mg, times the change in height, the distance, right? Force times distance times cosine of theta. Well, again, it's still moving up, and the gravity force is down, just as we said before. So, um, Cosine of 180 is going to be negative 1, and they add up to a grand total of 0. So the work done by the tension is going to equal mg delta h, which that's a calculation we've done before just moments ago. 80 times 10 times the change in height of 10. So the work done by tension is going to be 8,000 joules. And lastly, this might start to seem repetitious, but that's because it is. As it continues to move up, but this time it's slowing down, the work done by the tension and the work done by gravity taken together are going to, again, equal the change in kinetic energy. That would be the kinetic energy final minus the kinetic energy original. This time, the kinetic energy final is zero because they're stopped by the time this process is done. So we've got the work done by tension plus mg delta h times negative 1 equals 1 half mv original squared. So if we plug in some values, we've got the work done by tension minus 8,000 equals, oh, I messed something. Uh, don't forget that negative. Negative one half of 80 times 25. So that's going to be negative 1,000. If we add 8,000 to both sides, plus 8,000. So the work done by the tension is only 7,000 joules. So let's put this into perspective. Um, the tension, when it is accelerating the object, the spelunker, 
the tension has to pull, you know, extra hard. Uh, the tension has to do more. If this was you, you would have to pull harder to accelerate an object upward. Once that acceleration has been accomplished, you can ease off on the force. You only have to balance the force that you're working against. And so in order to continue lifting this thing, you don't have to exert quite as much energy. You literally have to do less work. And when the thing gets to the top or nears the top, you can actually reduce your amount of effort yet again because you're going to allow the thing to slow down. And so you are going to be doing even less work than you were before. In summary, there are two ways to go about finding the work done. Work done can either be found by determining the actual force and multiplying it by some displacement times cos theta, of course, or determining the amount of kinetic energy gained or lost, and then accounting for the work done by each individual force, the work done by the first force and the work done by the second force. Um, and another way to say that is to say that the um, network that is being done is, as we just said, uh, the sum of the works done by each force or also say that it is the um, work done by the net force. If you've got a force 1 times d plus a force 2 times d plus a force 3 times d, well, if you factor out d, you've got d times force 1 plus force 2 plus force 3. Well, if you account for all of those forces, isn't that the net force? You've got D times the net force. So, yeah, it's heady stuff. There's a few ways to go about it. And as always with physics, if you do all the things right, you're going to get the same answer either way. Good luck to us all.